there, YouTube? I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different tabletop game project every weekday at 1.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and give my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today, I'm very excited to be checking out the 27th most popular project on all the tabletop games. That is Grand Archive TCG, an anime-style trading card game with Western game design and extreme dot dot dot. Now, this one was actually suggested by someone in a video I did earlier this week. I did a different trading card game that I was very unimpressed with. And to be quite frank, before we get into this, I am uh, trading card games... Every single time I check them out on Kickstarter, there's just something that, that rubs me wrong. And this one right here, I'm a little bit curious to see why it's in the 27th ranking. Because it's already raised $800,000, yet if you look around here, you're not seeing numbers anywhere near $800,000. That looks like a lot more than it actually is. Which tells me there's not very much engagements once we click onto the project. And my main issue... Hey, what's up, Darth? Hopefully the sound is... And, uh, I do want to mention... Hopefully in the next few weeks, I will be getting headphones, which should improve the sound quality, so bear with me on that. Uh, but right now, $800,000, I'm very curious to see why it's 27th, because it just launched a few days ago. And my main issue that I've had with other trading card games that I've looked on at Kickstarter is that every time I get in there, it just seems like it's a bunch of really rich people. Well, really rich people, I shouldn't say that, but a bunch of people who have spent $500 to $1,000 who are pretty much investing in this the same way you invest in cryptocurrency, hoping that it's going to hit big and then they'll be able to sell all the, the fancy cards that they got because they were early adopters or something like that. And I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not the case here. I ended up backing at the low pledge. I'm very intrigued to see this because that's the other thing with these trading card games. I've noticed that the low pledges, you know, the normal pledges for the people who just want to play the game and try the game and, you know, play it with their kids or play it with their friends, those are seldom taken compared to the large pledges. Hopefully this is not uh, like that. And, and here I see extreme collectability. I wasn't expecting the extreme to connect with the collectability. Also, I think you might want to spotlight the collectability a bit more. I can tell it's anime. I know it's a trading card game. I'm assuming since it's TCG. But at least, but I would put that in there. All right. So as always, when you go to the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? And what is Dawn of Ashes? Well, that's just for this one. 30 seconds. Wow. Quick. Okay. I immediately don't like this video right from the beginning. I knew it was an anime trading card game as soon as I looked at it because I saw the anime artwork. But I also knew it was an anime trading card game because I looked at your description, which once again said it was an anime trading card game. I don't need to know it's an anime trading card game for a third time already. Like, I am two minutes into your campaign and I'm already not a fan of the redundancy. cards with extreme collectability once again is this 30 second video is that just going to be you regurgitating the one sentence you have like what uh extreme collectability is already a ter huge turn off to me well at least i will say then darth th in their defense they're mentioning it right at the door they're saying hey you're either going to be into this or you're not going to be into this which you know trading card games that's the nature of the beast I do gotta say, I think that the artwork definitely looks better than the other trading card games that I've seen. And not like, um, let me rephrase that. Not the art itself looks like it's better artwork, because that's very subjective, but it looks much more cohesive. A lot of the other ones will have like seven, eight, nine, ten artists, which this one might, but the art styles are so drastically different. Whereas this one, it looks pretty succinct so far, which I think is a good thing. I also like the graphic design. Uh, granted, that looks like pretty standard TCG graphic design. Lots of card effects. Champion, don't care, collector thing, but that's going to turn some people on. Norm, I'm seeing symbology. Okay, this look, that looks very snazzy. That looks like a professionally done card, which is not something you can say about every Kickstarter project. Oh, that was a really good shot. I will give them credit credit kudos there and actually i need to talk to my friend matt uh because i did another game yesterday it was a worker placement game about robots and they had a deluxe version of the game and they have they have pre they're pretty much for the deluxe version of the game are going to do exactly what they're doing here where the cards are all shiny when you turn them and they look cool and i don't feel like they they did a great enough job conveying that in that kickstarter campaign and i think this company did already just by twisting this this you know this 3d image of the card very well done 
those cards look almost exactly like Magic the Gathering cards. You know what? Maybe that's what it was. And it's clean, it's clear, and it, it, you know, here's the bottom line. Some people say they're stealing it, but I say, if, it, if, it's, if it's not broke, why fix it? Like, if that format works, if that format's clean, if people are familiar and comfortable with that format, why mess with it? Oh, God, it is! It literally is! Western game design, extreme collectability, anime-style traded card game. This whole 30-second video is literally just them regurgitating this one sentence, which I was like, what? Who, do who does this? You better wow me in this last 12 seconds here. And once again, I want to remind everyone who watches this video, this is not a review of the game itself. I've never played this game. This is a review of how I believe the Kickstarter presentation is handled. And I think I need to mention that in more videos. Now live on Kickstarter. Jesus Christ. No. No. I know it's now live on Kickstarter. I am on Kickstarter. Now, granted, you may be using this as a promotional video on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever the hell people go on now. But the bottom line is, for your Kickstarter video, I don't want to feel like this is a 30-second ad that was ripped straight from Facebook. I just don't. You need to bring more with this ad. I am super uninspired by this. The only thing that has looked good to me was the artwork. That's it. That video. Ugh. Hated that video. Just terrible video. It didn't tell me anything I didn't know at all, except for the fact that I could buy playmats. But let's be honest. I, you were pretty much expecting this is a trading card game. I'm going to be able to buy your playmats. So I think that video was terrible. Like, if I stop right now, I would be giving this an, like, an, an F almost. Like, this is, I don't think anything they've said here is very inspiring. And we look at the number of backers as opposed to the amount of money raised. And this is where I really start to raise my eyebrow. And I really start to see why this is the 27th most popular game. And the reason why is, let's just bump this up to 1000 That's pretty much the average pledge level right now is $790. Roundabout, $750, whatever it may be. And, and when I see that the average pledge level on a card game... Not a minis game. This isn't some massive minis games where I'm going to get 17 boxes sent in my mail and my mail carrier is going to hate me. This is a card game and the average pledge level spent is $750. That's where I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to see my way to the door because it just once again reeks of, is this game going to take off? And I, I have a hard time seeing it when the majority of people who are interested in this game are presumably people who are just the extreme collectors who are just holding on to this stuff and waiting to sell it. Okay. Stepping off my soapbox now. Uh, so what do we got? Uh, as always, so first, so do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Those are the most important things. Do I want it? No, not yet. I'm not convinced. How much is it? I don't know from the price. Can you do it? Uh, first created zero back. That lo that looks terrible. <laughs> like that always looks really bad. So, but it's not a deal breaker. But that means that you're going to have to convince me in other ways on the can you do it. We are a new team of game designers and art directors with a passion for anime. Dear God, we get it. Our network of artists span the countries of Japan, China, South Korea, and Taiwan. We love to meme around, but when it comes to our product, we show no reservation in effort. Okay, hopefully this website wows me. Also, if you want to look like you're less of someone just coming for a cash grab, go back 50 things for a dollar right now, and it will say first created, 50 back. If you don't want to spend the $50, go back 50 things that are going to fail. Uh, and, you know, is that unethical? I don't know. You tell me. But from their perspective, I think it just looks way better having first created, you know, 27 back, 50 back, whatever, as opposed to first created zero back, it looks like you're just here for a cash grab. And it doesn't help at all with the can you do it. It makes you look like you are not a member of the Kickstarter community, which immediately puts me a little bit at a reservation, especially if you're trying to get $750 from me. Back art. So once again, I'm hoping this is a website that just is, is more fluff from the... Welcome oh, to the Grand Archive Trading Card Game. Excellent. This is what I want to see. Hopefully that will be on that Kickstarter video a little bit later. And wow, that artwork, really, really well done. So I think that's really what they're selling here. The Grand Arcades, Monitors, the, well, this, we're talking about theme. Ooh, ooh, this is, that is a, that's a, this is a nice looking website. Look at this. This is professional. I will say, I think I've done three TCGs so far on Kickstarter. This is by far the best and most professional looking one that I've seen when I get to the website. 
Uh, I don't feel that way about their video in any way, shape, or form. But this website makes me feel more comfortable. Absolutely. So uh, that does help right there with the Can You Do It. Yeah, the artwork, top notch. So story, new stretch goal. So the first thing we get into is a stretch goal. I love seeing that. I'm always a big fan of that. Uh, because that means not only am I buying whatever it is I was already going to buy, but there's going to be more that's going to be added to it. So four lineage breaks champions are added to, added to the Dwa set. Champions that have strong effects but lose the ability to level up. They are designed to improve the drafting experience of Dwa. Now, a couple things I like here, a couple things I don't like here. First and foremost, I love the fact that, because here's, here's what I always say. Four lineage break champions are added to the Dewa set, and this is where I would normally mock them and say, ha, 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 that means absolutely nothing to me, and then I'd keep scrolling. But what they've done is they put right here, champions that have strong effects but lose the ability to level up. So I know that these are going to be people that are going to be really strong, but as the game progresses, they're going to lose a little bit of their power as other people level up. And even me, as a non-TCG fan, says, oh, I understand that in my brain. So just that little sentence right there I think is really well done. Now, I don't like the uh not adding any artwork at all what i do is maybe put one of the champions that's already in the game so i can just get a feel for what they do zoom in on a little bit and then say four new mystery ones uh so i would like to see that artwork but i still think that's a great thing and they're just showing the most recent stretch goal as well i'm not a big fan of that i like when they show me all the stretch goals but at least now they've wet my whistle for the stretch goals. They have not buried the stretch goals at the bottom, which I think is one of the biggest sins that you can do on a Kickstarter page. So, uh, little I like here, little I don't like, but I'm excited to see. So, introduction, it looks like... Okay. So, uh, welcome to our Kickstarter page. Grand Archive is an anime trading card game with Western game design and extreme collectability. Shut your mouth with that goddamn sentence! I have heard that now three or four times. I don't want another one. No more. Half point, like... Stop with the redundancy. It is the first anime card game that embraces card cl card interface clarity, low stat numbers, and easily understood rules text. Taking a shot at a lot of other anime card games there. Uh, but whatever, I don't care. Take a shot. Developed with passion by a team of anime lovers and card game enthusiasts. And I think that's a great way to start. It's a passion project. And honestly, uh, that's what I would have done with the video there. I think that video is just god awful. I will be quite frank with you. I don't I do not think it is a good video. I think a personal touch would have been good here. This seems like a passion project. Uh, and it could seem even more like a passion project if you leaned into that. And when I know it's a passion project, I just I think most people are a little bit more open to forgiving mistakes and forgiving little typos or little things like that. So I think it was because I think we're going to scroll down here and I think this is definitely going to be something where we see that it's a passion project, but I think the video might be a great place to lean in then, especially if you're trying to convey that you got a little bit of a sense of humor, maybe making just a little bit of humor in the video, because you did say right here, you didn't just say we love to mess around. You said we love to meme around and I noticed that and I liked it. All right. Gameplay. The best way to learn about Grand Archive is by watching our quick start guide. Excellent. Excellent. It's high up on the video it's high up here it's great i still want to know the price but i imagine there's going to be a whole boatload of different pledge levels but this is one of the most important videos and let's make sure welcome minutes. is the card's elemental requirement for your main phase and during your main this phase like and only well if you want to pay for a reserve excellent six minutes and i hopefully should be up and running great love starting with that i think that's a great thing now we are uh now we have this which is not good like what like the six minute video great this okay cards go in let's see if i can figure out cards go in stuff how yeah look there's um another another i pick up my mat deck and then another thing happens and then bam card attacks yeah i don't really need this here uh or, or maybe put a little text here or something like that it just these three gifs or gifs whatever you want to call them seem a little bit odd they already blown past the stretch goal haven't they yeah six, well that was six hundred thousand, and they're yeah they're okay so hopefully they have some more stretch goals because the last tcg that i looked at and i don't want to i don't want to speculate or anything like that but it totally looked like um they they well i won't go to it i don't i don't want to get in trouble for slander let's just say i was unimpressed with it defeat the opponent's champions before they defeat yours uh different elements provide multiple unique challenges to all things you're showing me close-ups of the card which i think is great 
champions level up over the course of the duel. That's cool. Seven different classes, each with unique playstyles. This is all spectacular stuff to mention. I think this is all the kind of spectacular stuff you should have mentioned in your video instead of regurgitating that same sentence that, that was on the main image. Like, like, this is all great stuff. You just hit me with some quick hitters. Champions will level up over time. You know, uh, seven different classes, each with their own unique playstyle. Will you be a magician who does this, or will you be a guardian who does that? Explore in this game. You know, I, that's what I think I'd lean into more, especially if you're actually trying to appeal to the gamers and not the giant collectors of whales. You know, I've heard... I've heard, what, three times now that this has extreme collectability. This is the first time I'm actually hearing, oh, the gameplay sounds cool as well. They're just some of the, these are just some of the cards available in Grand Archive. I'd like to see this zoomed in a little bit more. You are clearly, clearly leaning in on your artwork, and I think it's doing a little bit of disservice not to zoom in on how gorgeous it is, and also all the text on this card. I want to read what the Rye Spellcrafter does. I want to read all the stuff if I'm really invested in the game, and I think this could be a very fun experience for someone who's interested in your game. Like, if I'm really interested in your game, I could go through here, and I could scroll, and I could be like, oh, that sounds cool. Ooh, okay, cool. You know, you've done that little scroll before, but when you don't zoom in, I can't do that scroll, and I say, oh, pretty artwork. I already knew that continuing on more coming soon follow us on instagram to see more make this clickable that, that's just a no-brainer make this whole thing clickable or make just part of it clickable cut off this part but save me the click save me the click i'm your customer and i want this to be an easy shopping experience collectability and now i'm starting to get annoyed about the fact that i still don't know the price as well uh because once again do i want it can you do it how much is it uh, a lot of that hinges on how much it is. Collectible rares, Grand Archives, pinnacles of collectible cards. Artist sign cards. Uh, all signatures are unique. No two signatures are the same. Each collector rare is serialized with a unique number. Exclusive, extended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where you're trying to get the people. Uh, and actually, no, no, no. I don't want to. I just don't want to skip past this. I want to get better at analyzing tcgs let's do it together because this is very clearly doing a great job of appealing to those people who are going to spend 700 to a thousand dollars somewhere in here um so let's see what they're doing better than the other tcgs that i've seen i'm very interested so i like there that they're telling you exactly why it's collectible artist signed cards I like that you're giving me these numbers. One in 360 packs can, can collect this. 360 packs. So this is super duper rare. They're breaking it down super simple for me if I happen to be one of those people who wants to spend the money. Foil scarcity. One in eight packs contain a foil card. Pulling a foil card, pulling a foil card will be exciting again. So what this, they're slapping in the face and say, yeah, they're all just giving you now foil cards. Ha 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 all the time. We're not going to do that. We're going to make it special again. And I like the fact that they're mentioning that. Uh, print reports. Print run information will be made fully available for all products before official release dates. And uh, honestly, if this is not industry standard in the TCG realm, we should push for that uh, because that, yeah, I feel like that's really, really important. Uh, population reports will be published for high rarity cards for each first edition. I don't know what this stuff means, but I'm sure if you do, it looks great. Whoa, NFTs be still my beating heart. I still don't know quite what it means, but just the fact that you have it here, wow. Grand Archive NFTs. Packs have a chance to include an NFT. Whoa, so not only can I get a foil or a sign, I can get an NFT? I actually love this idea. This is This is brilliant. This is spectacular because, uh, as far as I know, an NFT is kind of like you owning the digital rights to something. And if you're going to have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different pieces of artwork in this, if you could also potentially win the NFT to one of that artwork, like, as a fan of the game, how cool is that? Like, I think that is so cool. I think this is a brilliant idea, and this immediately gets a, a full point grade bump. Whatever the grade is, it's going to get a full point bump for this idea right here. I love that. That's how you get people excited. Uh, accessible and environmental friendly. Uh, and honestly, I think that this should be something that you shot on the marquee because that's something different. That's something unique. And especially in the trading card game realm, I'm not seeing too much unique and different. 
I don't think you're unique and different because this is an anime style TCG. I say to myself, oh, another anime style TCG. I think you're unique and different because I can get foils, I can get artist sign cards, or I can even get an NFT. Hmm. I think that's what it is, though. Uh, Engine Beam, why? Stuff about NFTs. Great. That's what I was really hoping for. I was hoping for four paragraphs about NFTs before we got to the price because that's 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 what i love on a kickstarter page he said sarcastically and once again i know some people that are coming in for the tcg realm are gonna be like why don't you just go over here and click on it well if you're on mobile which most people uh, at least according to my polls that shop on kickstarter now or it's around 45 to 50 percent i think it was are on mobile and on mobile it's an extra click that people don't want to make make it easy to fund our art creating a new product let alone tcg makes a lot of time testing research and of course money just get down to the price okay so you're breaking down exactly why you need the money uh and i also did a poll on this as well i don't remember what the results were but what do you think when people do this yeah i don't have a problem with it but the bottom line is it's not nearly as important as how much is it i need the price and i need the damn shipping don't make me keep going for it build the community join our discord and this i'm seeing this more and more often and discord is great for one reason and not so great for another reason it's great because it's it's just an awesome spot for you to talk with people that are excited about the project and get this instantaneous feedback and schedule things and do all sorts of cool stuff like that but by having the discord and making it one of the main things you send people to that also means that you're going to have less people chit-chatting in the updates and the comments which is why you get bumped down to 27th in the popularity because uh, you just don't have as much excitement around your kickstarter project so i personally am not a big fan of the discord or actually i am a big fan of the discord but then announcing you know hey from this point to this point we're gonna have a discord blackout and we want everybody to take it to the updates and comments so we can yada 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 i think that is what you do if you got yourself a discord but let me know what you think about that in the comments below to attack distributors one of our major goals is to get as many local game stores as possible if it's possible for us to achieve this with a direct to consumer model that's why we need to partner with distributors to handle this we hope that this kickstarter campaign will show distributors that people are interested in our product god just give me the damn price here we go this is going to be the price and wow once again I, I i i i like and i dislike here and i'm gonna go with hate actually i like and i hate something here i like this box i like this booster pack i think this looks great i think it looks like clean clear packaging and i would not bat one single eye if i saw this at my friendly local game store i think whoever did their packaging did a great job at first glance um uh, but why is this so low i am 24 minutes into this campaign and i've seen a lot of the same stuff this is different i i would put this way higher i think one starter win uh, and then detail oh come on dang it just give me the price already why are you gonna show me what i'm buying but not show me the price for what i'm buying i want to know what the price is okay because this is the one this is the one i would assume if you just want to try this game out here you go you got yourself the the starter kit which will presumably let you play one-on-one -on -one, and then you got the dawn of ashes you're going to get one extra special little thing and who you know that might come with the foil or an nft or something crazy like that but then you can also you know deck construct a little bit and see if it's for you and if this is a low price i'm gonna guess this is 30 to 40 dollars you spotlight that and i would put that on that main image starting at thirty dollars or thirty dollars you know it's just mm, but it's not just got here what i miss another tcg well actually a t another trading card game but this one i have mixed feelings about i think they i think this one could go the distance i will be honest with you and i'm all i'm always honest with you i think of the tcgs that i've seen this one definitely looks like the one that i could see potentially you know being one that gets popular it actually turns into a game at least based on what i've seen so far one starter wind water uh, the dynamic dynamic print run 500 minimum and ten thousand maximum okay so presumably that pledge level will be capped at ten thousand then and that makes sense normally i would be like why the hell would you possibly do this if this was a board game and you capped it at ten thousand i'd be like why would you do that no if you get ten thousand people who want to buy your board game then you do a fifty thousand print run uh and you make yourself a whole boatload of money <laughs> you know or you say you know i'm just saying or you go twenty thousand twenty five but with a tcg i understand why they have it capped 
And as a trying to put myself in the mind of someone who loves trading card games, I like and appreciate that. And I love, love the fact that they're mentioning right now exactly how big this could potentially get. Like, this is as big as it's going to be. And I like that. Dawn of Issues, uh, Ashes, Kickstarter, exclusive packs. These packs do not have foil or collectible rares. Get bent. Uh, so I take that back on this. But still, $30, $40 for this. I think that's whatevs. Uh, the Booster Box First Edition. Look at this. This looks like something that could very easily be in a store. It looks nice. But <laughs> what is a dynamic print run? Uh, is a print to remand bound by a minimum and a maximum? Yeah, cool, whatever. Just tell me the price. Are these the two pledge levels? Or is this the pledge level section? Did I stumble into it? I'm so... It's so unclear. So this is the Booster Box. I doubt these are the only two things we're, they're selling, but we'll see. Balancing collectability, whatever. And once again, I see their extreme bias not towards the gamers, but towards the collectors. And as a gamer, I don't like that. I don't. I, it just turns me off from a project like this. We've decided to change how Unlimited will release. I don't care. Unlimited edition products. So some of these are going to be Unlimited edition, and that's probably why they don't care. Yeah, I don't even care. Oh, hey, MSRP. I have, so what, <laughs> come on, people. So I know the price if I buy it at my friendly local store, but I still don't know the price of buying it right now. How hard is it to slap a price tag on these? And this absolutely reeks of first created, zero backed right here. 110%. And I don't know why this is something I have to keep saying over and over and over on these videos. If you are planning on launching a Kickstarter product, please just go and look at 10 of the top board game projects out there. Tabletop games projects. And just write down all the little things that you like and then steal those. And they did not do that. They most certainly did not do that. Because this, this just reeks of it. I didn't get why we can't scroll the right bar to see the prices before watching all the campaign. Uh, because it's annoying. This is your story and it all should be, information should be there. But on mobile, it's an additional click and you don't want to have people doing the additional click because on mobile, you don't actually see this whole section over here. It's just, I, I want it to be more shopper friendly. Dawn of Ashes, Prelude, Starter Kit, Unlimited Edition, MSRP 40. Okay, this is something I'm presumably I can buy. Backer Awards. Hey, finally we got to it. So the starter tier is $40. And I, look how low this is. So what they're saying is every single bit of information for the last 29 minutes is more important than this. And it's just, yeah, ig. Uh, and yeah, if it's starting at $40, slap $40 up there. Boom. Now granted, this, this, this is, this is really dark. Like it's really, I don't know. It's clean and clear though. So $40 if you just want to dip your toes into it. And then there's an early bird, which, and yeah, oh God. Dang it! It did it to me again! Every damn TCG! So, I'm beginning to think, I'm going to speculate, that there are roughly 263 people in the world who actually like trading card games, and then the rest of the people are just collectors trying to make money. Because this is it. This is that tier. $30. Try out the game. Seven people. Seven only seven that's that's not good because the next one is a huge jump so the next one forty dollars uh so four people four people apparently don't like discounts whatever more power to him but once again that goes to oh no it's 93 never mind so 93 but that's still not much 97 like that's not a print run of a board game right there uh so essentially 97 people were just like i'm kind of interested in this game and yet it has nearly eight hundred thousand dollars those two numbers, they, they, just, they just don't work in my brain. So I got the golds here. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one's going to get you this, and then a whole bunch of other cards. And this one is 224. Okay. So I see this as people. So these, I think, are the TCG fans who just want to open a whole bunch of packs. And the, I'm speculating here, by the way. And let me know if you're a backer of this campaign, uh, if this is you. I think this is the people who, who do love TCGs. And, but they love the opening as well and the collectability. So they get the best of both worlds here. And I actually think that's a great pledge right there. I, I think $115 is reasonable, especially with what we see on Kickstarter pretty frequently. 
and I imagine that this booster first edition box is going to give me the chances to get all sorts of rares and things like that. Uh, I checked out the gameplay video and didn't seem nothing special. I, I, I could believe that. I mean, it is a trading card game, and uh, there's just they've been they've been done to death. Uh, and if you're newer into the hobby, you might be like, I don't remember too many trading card games. You got to go to like, uh, it was like, this was actually before I got into the hobby. I just like, there was trading card games based on everything. There was, uh, I just saw it today. I'm pretty sure there was a uh, Nightmare, on, not Nightmare on Elm Street. The, uh, the Jack Skellington had his own trading card game. And like, you know, obscure 90s movies will have their own trading card game. There was like a Highlander trading card game. It was it was oversaturated, and then they kind of just whoom, uh, got, all got killed by magic, and now uh, one of them is trying to rise from the ashes. At least that's what I understand about trading card games. And if you're more in the know, please fill people in the comments. I'll pin it because once again, I know very little about trading card games, just what people tell me, and from doing these. So then we get the platinum tier, three hundred dollars, four starter kit Kickstarter editions, okay, two do away. Uh, two of these, and then a Grand Archives Origin Kickstarter playmat. So one playmat. So that's that's only one playmat. <laughs> okay, it's interesting. I thought they'd give you two, so at least you could play with somebody else. Two hundred seventy-seven. Now I will say, their pledge levels are pretty solid, aside from the first two, because they have decent numbers. Two hundred forty-four, two hundred seventy-seven. Those are solid playlists. Night Before Christmas. Z uh, Garcia at the Dice Tower. Love the Dead CCG. CCG. Ah, trading card games, collectible card games. I get them mixed up sometimes. Thank you for the info, by the way. So I have the Diamond tier. Wait. Uh, so the Game Store tier, which once again is not listed here. <laughs> which I don't. I don't. Wow. Oh no. This where's the where's the Game Store tier? Damn it. Where's the where's the Game Store tier? Go. Okay. So the Game Store tier. How many people took this? 15 so 15 game stores are interested in this and you didn't put it here so that's an interesting choice uh you didn't really acquiesce to them i guess very well i know there was a section up earlier where you talked a little bit about it but i don't feel like if i were a game store it felt like you were really marketing to me and i think the the thin line you have to straddle is trying to and tcgs now that i really think about it are kind of hard to market because are you marketing the collectors who are going to make it so you get $600,000? The whales that are just going to sit on this stuff? You know, are you marketing to the, the people who are going to spend one to $200 and they just want to open up a whole bunch of packs and maybe find some rares? Or are you marketing to the people, the game stores, who you really, really, more than just board games, need to embrace your product? Like, if a board game doesn't get embraced by retail stores, it's like, pfft, whatever. But a trading card game is a whole different ball game, And then you have just your regular players. So I could see why marketing a TCG would be insanely difficult. I really don't like how they have limited to the 600 to 150. Basically, the only people who got this is the ones that knew about the Kickstarter before it launched. And I've noticed uh, that's a very big trend with, tr with the TCGs. And I think that's part of the reason why I see these trading card games. And they have hundreds of thousands of dollars despite having next to no buzz. And that's because... You know, it's the same reason why people buy crypto who don't know much about crypto, like me. <laughs> They're just like, hey, I've heard that these things blow up a lot. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of it. Um, I don't know. So we got the 600. Uh, so this one is, ooh, is this, what is this? Lorraine Blademaster Alternative Artwork Kickstarter Promo. So I'm guess, going to guess that that's... So essentially they're saying, hey, we're going to give you a super limited card guaranteed... And I, yeah, and I bet, and they said that's, he said that's sold out, and that is, yeah, it's gone. So champion tier, limited to 100, and this one has 35 backers, so 35, so that is 35 grand right there. Uh, we have the grand champion, $2,500, dear God, and you get five of these. So, uh, okay, so there you go. The rabbit is out of the hat. How did they get a huge chunk of their money? Because this is completely sold out, folks. That is, uh, let's see, that is $125,000 right there. And that is $125,000 of not people excited to play this game. You know, $125,000 for a board game is thousands of people excited to play it. $125,000 uh, in a trading card game is is 50 people who are like, oh, I'm going to make some money. And therein lies why these trading card games have next to no popularity, I think, uh, on Kickstarter, at least when it comes to 
uh, the popularity track. Not when it comes to the money track, because obviously that's not a... And then we have a... Yeah, we got a 10,000. Okay, designer tier. Design your own card. For our brick and mortar stores, you must be able to verify your store after Kickstarter ends. Oh, so they put it and they, they slapped it right here. It seems kind of odd, out of place, instead of just doing it with the rest, but whatever. Uh, design this. And here's the other thing. I don't like this now because I can't buy it. And if I can't buy it, get rid of it. I just, because uh, it's just like, ugh. And granted, and, here, and here's the way I see it. It makes people disappointed that they didn't get here earlier to get it. And if it's not there, but I, then I still happen to stumble onto it, it's like an extra big surprise. Like, oh crap, this 2500 is still here? Are you kidding me? And it feels like you have to snatch it up. So I think it's a double-edged sword of being awesome. All right. Uh, designer tier, 10 grand, brick and mortars, whatevs. What is this? The game store tier two for $1,000. Oh, where's that one? God, this is, this is, there's too many. I don't like the number of pledge levels here, but they're for the most part getting taken so where's the where's the double game store so there's game store tier one game store tier two okay so they do have 35 so they have 50 friendly local gaming stores so that's about one in each state that's not terrible that's not terrible uh and now we do have more so, uh, and now i see why they're all the way at the bottom because they're hey guess what everybody you can buy more stuff from us yippee uh, like Come on. Uh, Playmat, don't care. Playmat, don't care. But these are micro stretch goals, which I do like. And what I mean by micro stretch goal, 50,000, typically not a micro stretch goal. But when you hit 800,000, you know, a micro stretch goal is just a stretch goal you're going to have to check every couple days to see if you've hit it. And uh, so I do like that. Two, uh, community votes for an existing card to receive an alternate art promo. That ba So cool. So they are having community votes, which I always think is a great thing. I wonder if they're doing it on Discord, though. Hopefully they're doing the updates and comments so that'll bump them up on the popularity chart and just get more eyeballs on the project. 400k stretch goal. Fourth class added to Dawn of Ashes set. Community votes for which class? I thought there were seven. But anywho, uh, that's exciting that you're getting a whole new class. All right. So about the team, people, they like stuff. About the artists, people, they draw one artist? Wow. Uh, due to security reasons, we must keep most of our artists anonymous for now. I, I, it, okay I, that's odd but whatevs if someone doesn't feel comfortable being on there then someone doesn't feel comfortable being on there and we don't have any information about shipping come on come on really that's bad that is not good and so because like look this is 1250 people who are getting a pretty sizable box set to them unless of course the shipping is handled in here it's not so your shipping section is, uh, I would normally say god-awful, but it's non-existent, so it's worse than god-awful? So, yeah, because once again, do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? And you not, you aren't mentioning a big component of how much it is. Now, let me double-check and make sure uh, to pay shipping, add-on prices. Uh, so this is, your, you're talking about add-on prices in here? Not, uh, okay. I, I, this is actually... This is actually a poll question. All right, I'm going to put it up, but I'm going to ask it to you all first. What do you think about this idea of having the add-on prices and the add-on stuff listed over here instead of having it listed over here, which is the industry standard? I personally like it over here better because it helps you kind of see what you're buying a little bit better. Whereas the starter kit, no, I know what the starter kit is. That's that one box and the booster. Yeah, I don't know. But let me know what you think. Which what style do you prefer? And no shipping. There's no shipping information. FAQ, I bet one's about shipping. No. Okay. So, well, maybe it's just me. Maybe no one wants to know how much the thing is to get shipped. I highly doubt that. Uh, add-on prices should be listed in both places. Actually, you know what, Darth? I think, that, I think that's the way to go. Why not both? Why not both? Are on-time real availers get available to get the game store tier? How are you going to verify the brick and mortar store? We'll be asking for a proof of... <laughs> Those are the two FAQs. So, okay. And they're both centered at retail stores. They're saying, hey, you're an online retail store? Get Ben. Hey, you can't... And you have to, like, and you have to show us your proof of business lease agreement... I understand why, because 
I imagine a lot of collectors would just go the route of saying, hey, I'm a retail store and just buying that pledge level. But still, I'm pretty sure there's more important stuff to talk about in the FAQs. Grand Archive TCG Kickstarter update number one! And the 956 people were so excited they left two comments. Which once again goes back to the fact that people do not seem excited about this project. It seems like just a bunch of collectors. Hello, this is Alan from the Grand Archive team. And I want to have I want to have a tart to tart talk with you. This is Forrest to you. And I want to say if you're thinking about running a big scam and just leaving the country and making four to five hundred thousand dollars, I think realistically, if you just got on Fiverr and you hired a whole bunch of people to put together a really well done Kickstarter page uh, that was a trading card game, you could make a lot of money and then just boop, skip the country. I think you just need to look into how they advertise. Um, and I wonder if that's going to happen eventually, <laughs> if someone's just going to just make a fantastic TCG page and just run off with all the money because they just make obscene amounts of money, especially if you mark. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was a weird non sequitur. Let's get back to their update. Hello, <laughs> this is Alan from the Grand Archive team. First off, on perhaps the team, I'd like to thank you all for your tremendous support and faith in our project. You guys completely blew us out of the water and we are honored and blah, blah, blah. Stretch goal. The first thing we'd like to update you guys about is the stretch goals. As you all have seen, the guys absolutely crushed the stretch goal. Cool. Whatever. Print run. Uh, I thought we already talked about this kind of stuff. You're getting more in depth. Game store tier. We've added this question into our FAQ, but the game store tier is for brick and mortar LCGs only. And thank you for reading this. We love the community. We'll make you proud. So here's the first thing. End with a question. Always end with a question. And this one seems like a no-brainer. Well, I know in the comments below. We're huge anime fans, and we want to make this a spot where we chit-chat, where we talk, what's your favorite anime of all time? Yada, yada. Just anything like that. My limits are... Oh, uh, here are Unbound! And they were showing me a card. Why are you showing me a card? Whatever. I'm sure there's a reason. Is there any chance to expand the higher tiers? I understand the final destination of the team, but I don't lose anything for Ask. Also, like a stretch goal recommendation, it would be nice to have Kickstarter exclusives or some unique alternate artwork. Awesome update. Okay. So two people engaged. Did they engage back? No. Uh, so I would answer that question. Once again, that was 13 and 15 hours ago, so cut them some slack. Actually, how many people are working here? How many people we got? We got any collaborators? New collaborators! <laughs> okay, so the updates and the comments. Probably not going to have the best customer service, potentially. Is the price of the booster boxes reflected the scarcity of foils slash collectors slash thereof? If I'm only getting a foil every eighth pack, that just means the production cost should be cheaper. Just asking, is it possible that the diamond tier number be raised? Same here. Unfortunately, there'll be no increase in the tiers, but why? This is a terrible decision on many levels. Offering a Kickstarter-only item to higher tiers is fine as a project, but a horrible policy when you limit those tiers. Worse so when all those sell out in the first few hours of the campaign. It's a good way to shoot any organic growth in the foot of your campaign, especially when taking into account that you've only blah, 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 blah. And pretty much what they're saying is, <laughs> we got $800,000. We're not changing shit. That is exactly what they're saying here. Uh, and I, I see that viewpoint 100%. 100%. You got 800 grand. Then buy. Don't let the door hitch on the way out. When you run the pledge manager afterward, modify the pledge level and more add on stuff so they haven't answered that question. Hopefully they'll get on there. Uh, what, what are the dimensions of the play mat? Once again, that should be something that I should have already known. Are there only two champions? And, and once again, this is something that you saw that was answered. Hopefully you put it in the FAQ, but more importantly, you also put it on the campaign page. Are there only two champions? Isn't that number a bit low for a starting game? Or are you planning to add more? I believe there will be four due to the stretch goal in the first set. We have two champions available in the starter kit. Due to the stretch goal, there will be four champions in the Dawn of Ashes set. Warrior and one for the community will vote on. Or sword bear, blah, blah, blah. What is... The, so, yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing I'm noticing here, which says a lot to their story. None of this is, can't wait, this is going to kick, you know, kick butt. My favorite thing is this anime. I'm excited. Every single person in this comment is either complaining or asking a question, which means either they're complaining and you didn't do a good enough job answering questions that you probably should have done, which takes me back to the original question I had, which is why didn't you go look at other popular projects and see what you need? And the bottom line, did no one mention shipping? Uh, let's see, shipping, shipping. Any info on shipping, VAT, etc. Two days ago. Not until the end of the campaign. They will ask you for your info and then provide you with a shipping quote. Would be uh, at least good to know where they ship from. Pretty sure they're based in Texas. And I love the fact that you were like, dipping out. Like, nope, not touching this one. Not answering this question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a half point loss right there. Not. Here's the thing. 
it's not that you're not answering questions in the comments. It's that you specifically chose not to answer that question. What's up, Game On? And when you do that, that looks bad. That just looks bad, especially when I point it out, which that's why I do this segment. So someone asked you a very legitimate question that 99% of the other Kickstarters right now, if I went in tabletop games, and I'm going to uh, maybe not 99, 95% of all the tabletop games right now would tell me the shipping or an estimate of the shipping. And you're like, we're not going to give you a damn thing. You want to know about VATS? VATS? Not going to tell you anything. Where we're shipping from? Not going to tell you anything. And that is... That goes back to the can you do it. And that really makes me skeptical on the can you do it. Just back this project. Super excited about this. Honestly, it reminds me of Force of Will and that game like no other. So Kyle, we have Kyle. This is the first person I've seen who's actually excited about the game. My question. Ah, oh, but there's still a question. If more stretch goals become unlocked, can I add that to my pledge? Sorry, this is my first time back at Kickstarter. So that might be a dumb question. Uh, and so Kyle is just asking a very simple Kickstarter question. And so his question is, uh, so let's see. And we do have 190. So we do have a, a big portion of them, new people. Uh, I think the stretch goals are automatically included. They ask new. Yeah, so that's typically how they work. Are the game store tiers eligible for online stores? Rebuttal. What's the rebuttal? Rebuttal? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. I'm a new seller, but have been doing it for a year on the Discord. Looks like they said no. Oh, so that's about uh, if you're an online game store. Okay. Final grade on this one. This one is a very interesting one. I think the last TCG got a D. I don't think... Well, maybe we ought. Do I want it? No. I come at this from the perspective of a gamer, and I'm not interested. You didn't sell me on the game very well at all. Uh, your main video was very uninspiring. Your pledge, like the, the fact, it just looks like this is mostly kept afloat by a bunch of people who are collecting it and hoping to sell them off. Which, is a, as a gamer, is a turnoff. Because I say to myself, is that game really going to thrive and survive if most people aren't even playing the game? They're just here to make money? And the answer is no. So, do I want it? Nah. I didn't think they did a good job. Can you do it? Yeah. I don't think you did a good job there either. There's a lot of good on this Kickstarter page. There's a lot of things that need to be here. The six minute video. You know. Uh, but the pledge level. The organization. Some of the redundancy, the no shipping at all, the poor customer service, the first created zero backed, and then you're not telling me about where you're shipping from or any of that stuff, the VAT taxes, no thanks. Can you do it? Not really. Maybe you can, but from my perspective, I don't feel comfortable, and my perspective is trying to be a Kickstarter backer, and we've been burned by way too many projects. So can you do it? How much is it? That's where things get interesting. And this is where you were about to score some kudos points. Because $30, that's great. That's a great price. Especially if I'm assuming the shipping is, say, what, 8 bucks If you're shipping from the United States of America, put this in a medium flat rate padded ship envelope. Send it on your way for $7.95. You get stamps.com. You get like 5 to 10% off. Bada boom, you're good to go. But instead, you chose not to tell me any information about shipping. I don't know if I do taxes. I don't know if there's a VAT. I don't know how much it's going to cost. And that's terrible. That's half the information I need when it comes to how much is it. So while I do think the price is very reasonable at 30 bucks and then uh, what is it? 40 bucks. No. So the three main questions, do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? I thought you did a poor job of answering all of those. I thought the video was super uninspiring. And now. So my, my grade I'm leaning toward would be around a D minus, but it's going to go up. And the reason why it's going to go up is because I do think they did a good job, a great job, I would say, of appealing to the collectors, which was clearly part of their mission statement and why their bank account is going to have $800,000, you know, in like 40 plus days or a million dollars in like 40 plus days or whatever it may be. So yeah, they did a great job there. So that's like a half letter grade, I think. So we're going to go with a D. So in the end, Grand Archive TCG I'm going to give it a D. I think as a gamer, nothing here excites me, and there's red flags that scare me. But as a collector, you know, if I'm buying crypto or if I'm buying trade card games, I will say I think I think the cut of their jig was – because there were some spots where I was like, the people behind this did some great things. But they also did some things that just completely kill it for me, 
and so it's a D. But let me know in the comments below. What is your final grade for the, uh, what the what's the name of this? What is it? Grand Archive TCG. Also, if you enjoyed this segment, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below because every single time we get into one of these Kickstarter critiques, I never know which direction we're going. I don't do any planning before this. And it's always a fun ride and it's even more fun when you come join in the chat. I think you should retroactively give the previous TCG Kickstarter critique an F so you can give this one a D. This project is better than most TCG projects. At least it doesn't look like a scam. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> is that where we're at like kudos points because you don't look like a scam um i don't know let me know your grade in the comments below and as always thanks for your time youtube <laughs>